Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Out of the Park Baseball 24 playthrough of the Buffalo Wings. We are at the start of the 2023 season. Uh, just had our opening day game against the Miami Marlins, which was a 5-2 victory. New addition, uh, Bobby Bolig with a big game for us. Uh, three for three, two runs, three runs driven in and a walk, double and two home runs. And uh, the young right fielder, Mike Heiner, also had a nice major league debut going two for four with a pair of doubles. Uh, got five scoreless innings out of Chris Sabatka, walked one and struck out eight while giving up three hits. And then five relievers combined for the last four innings as the Buffalo Wings off to a 1-0 start here in 2033. And with the sounds of freedom that you may have just heard from the F-35s overhead fading into the distance, we can move on with the 2033 season. Uh, the goal for this Buffalo team is to get back into the playoffs for a sixth consecutive season. And the most logical past path back into the playoffs is to win the NL East for a second straight season. So I would say that certainly being in the playoffs is a minimum standard of success for us this year. Um, baseline goal is to win the NL East, and then I'd say the stretch goal is to have the best record in the National League and uh, hopefully home field advantage for as long as we're alive in the NL playoffs. So we'll see how the season goes. It's definitely a new look team. Haven't changed the pitching all that much except the back end of the bullpen, but uh, with the additions of Bolig and Heiner that I talked about, as well as free agent acquisition Jordan Westberg and uh, trade target Gavin Grayevac, uh, we've definitely added some new players into the mix for our offense this year. And the early stages of the season going really well for Buffalo, out to a 5-0 and start. Uh, we re-signed Franklin Heal, our sometimes controversial right-handed reliever to a three-year extension. Not big money. He's making almost $2.7 in his final arbitration year this year. Uh, we've got him for three years at an average of $2 million a year team option for the final season. So a reasonable contract for someone who has been... Um, a decent reliever out of the bullpen for us. And we are still waiting to hear back on the uh, bold contract that we made to Heiner before he had ever played a major league game. Um, his first 16 major league at-bats have been very good. Seven hits, including four doubles, a homer, and four ribbies. Uh, certainly don't expect him to continue playing at that pace, but I uh, think he could be a pretty valuable player for us for many years to come. Uh, definitely happy that the college player out of Bradley fell to us with the 32nd pick in the first round last year and think he's uh, likely not going to be the uh, 32nd most productive major leaguer in that entire class. Probably going to be one of the 10 most productive when all is said and done. And Heiner has signed the deal that we offered him, so a uh, bit of a bold move by us. Uh, we're going to be paying him certainly more the next three seasons when he would have been making the major league minimum. Um, probably end up um, paying him more for his first year of arbitration, but potentially less for the second and third years of arbitration and into free agency if he becomes the player that we think he can become. Uh, but you look at this contract, and it's a 10-year deal, up to $66 million total. Um, next year and the year after, instead of making the major league minimum of $720,000, he's going to be making 2 and $3 million. And you can see going up a million a year until finally in his age 33 season, a team option at $12 million. So it gives uh, Heiner lifetime financial security. Uh, we're taking a relatively good-sized risk for a team with our budget in case he doesn't develop as we hope and play as we hope. But given that uh, we've got a great scout and our scout kind of says he's a pretty darn good player, uh, at least with the bat, 
and hopefully on the base paths. Hopefully this deal will uh, work out well for us and uh, end up being a bargain that gives us some excess value over what we're paying him in the years to come. And we are through the first couple weeks of the regular season. A 9-4 and four record for the Wings uh, gives us a game-and-a-half lead over the Nationals. Um, not a ton of us on the leaderboards. Obviously, it's very early stages. The season isn't even 10% over yet. Uh, Vance Honeycutt leading the league in stolen bases. Uh, Chris Sabatka, 3-0 uh, and o record with a 0 0.48 ERA, 20 strikeouts over 18 and two-thirds innings. Uh, leading the league in ERA, tied for the league lead in wins. And Bryce Miller has seven saves, which is leading the league. And Sabatka tied for the league lead in pitcher war. So um, seems like a solid start on the field for the Buffalo Wings, and we'll see if we can keep it going over the next uh, several months. And we've made it through the first month of the season, 15-10 uh, and 10 record. So honestly, we've been about a, or exactly a 500 team since our 5-0 uh, and 0 start. Tied for first in the National League with the Expos, uh, the Yankees, who were projected to have the best record in baseball, actually have the second best record in baseball at this point behind the Dodgers, who are off to an 18-6 and 6 torrid start in the National League West. Take a look at our team statistics in this early stage of the season. Uh, we're right in line with our Pythagorean expectations. Um, have winning records against both left and right-handed pitchers. 600 winning percentage against both. So uh, that's uh, good to see that level of consistency there. Fourth in the National League in runs scored. Um, generally in the top half of most batting categories. Home runs where we are tied for last uh, would be the clearest exception to that. Um, the pitching staff has been fine, sixth in the National League and runs allowed. Um, not as good as it was last year at this point, but it's still relatively early stages. And uh, the defense has been good, second in defensive efficiency, third in zone rating as we try to hopefully give our uh, pitchers a break by having some good defenders in the field behind them. And a week into May, we've slipped back in the standings a bit. 18 and 13 record is still more than fine, uh, but we're a game and a half behind the Nationals, tied with the Expos for second in the NL East at this point. Uh, just had our first minorish injury of the season. Actually, it's not our first minorish injury of the season. It's the first minorish injury significant enough that we're actually going to put a player on the IL. Uh, Kyle Backus, the reliever, sore elbow, going to have a moderate impact on his throwing for a week. Uh, figure we're just going to put him on the 15-day IL and not mess around. Uh, hasn't been great this year, so maybe the uh, elbow's been giving him a little bit of trouble thus far. Juan Estrada and Hayden Yinger are also both a little bit banged up, but given that they are uh, starters who only pitch every five days, although Estrada certainly plays more than often more often than that is a two-way guy um, haven't felt the need to put either of them on the il with those lingering injuries but um opens up a spot in our rotation or not necessarily our rotation but on our pitching staff and we are going to bring up our top prospect the number 23 prospect in baseball sincere shazir fourth round draft pick from 2028 has had a pretty meteoric rise through our organization these past few years and quite honestly a pretty meteoric rise in terms of what our scout thought of him um, we've got a different scout now but you look at uh what we thought he was and what his potential was um you know two years ago on less than two years ago on june 5th 2031 kind of uh thought he was nowhere close to being a major league pitcher and even if fully developed was kind of a back end of the rotation guy and uh, we think his 
stuff, his movement and his control all have higher potential than they did a few years ago. And uh, he's also obviously done a pretty good job realizing the vast majority of that potential. Throwing harder than he used to at this point has picked up a couple miles of velocity. And uh, our scout thinks someday he could be one of the best arms in the game. And um, the 23-year-old um, is 5-2 and two with a 3.33 ERA in Albany, 47 strikeouts and 48 and two-thirds innings pitched. Uh, his ERA plus, his FIP minus, both uh, above average, the ERA plus in particular. Uh, his Sierra, a little worse than his actual ERA, but he's put up almost a win above replacement in his first seven starts. So he hasn't been lights out in Albany, but he's certainly been fine. And uh, we are going to give him a chance to make his major league debut soon. Um, he actually last pitched five days ago. Oh, so he pitched today, 95 pitches. So that's uh, not going to be pitching immediately for us, but I'm um, still going to bring him up. Um, and we'll have to decide whether we want to put him into the rotation or um, potentially just let him work out of the bullpen in the early days of his major league career. In midway through May, we're still playing reasonably well. 23-15 and 15 record, uh, half a game behind the Nationals, but the Nats, the Wings, the Braves, and the Expos are all separated by just a game and a half in the very competitive National League East. And um, three of those four teams would be in a wild card spot if the season were to end today. So... Um, a lot of strength at the top of the division at this point. Uh, certainly would think some things will shake out in the coming weeks and months, and it probably won't be this competitive in October. Uh, taking a brief look at uh, the league leaders here a little further into the season, Cam Collier, our third baseman, hitting 362, um, has driven in 20 runs for us. Uh, Vance Honeycutt still tied for the league lead in steals, batting 304, eight homers, 27 ribbies. Uh, so both of those players having pretty solid offensive seasons. Uh, Sabatka has uh, pitched not quite as well recently, but still undefeated on the season, 5-0 and record. The ERA has ballooned to 1.94, uh, still tied for the league lead in wins, but uh, no longer on the pitcher war chart. And uh, looks like Bryce Miller no longer among the top three in the league in terms of saves here on May 16th. And Shazir has done fine for us in very limited action. Uh, Backus ready to come off the IL. Two games pitched for Shazir, three innings, uh, two hits allowed, two walks, did strike out five, hasn't allowed a run. Uh, so he's been very good, uh, but in general... Our bullpen has been pretty good this year. Uh, we are going to send him back down to AAA um, just so he can be getting regular action uh, every five days as a starter, which will ultimately be his role with us. But feel right now, um, want to get the left-handed arm of Bacchus uh, back to give us a little more optionality and ability to play the matchups out of our bullpen but um, certainly haven't seen anything from Shazir thus far this year in either AAA or the majors that uh, has us concerned that he's not going to potentially live up to the really lofty expectations he's coming in with. And our wings continue to play well, made it to the month of June, uh, taking a look at the standings, 32-22 and 22 record, two games up on the Braves and the Nationals, two and a half game lead on the Expos, and three up on the Pirates, uh, the Marlins, the Phillies, and the Mets all have losing records among our rivals in the National League East. Uh, so the season's going really well. Uh, the Dodgers certainly have faded. That 593 winning percentage of our wings is the best in the National League and uh, the third best in baseball behind only the Yankees and the Blue Jays, who are uh, the two best teams in baseball right now, are competing in the American League Eastern Division. 
taken a look at uh, how our team has performed and how our players have performed over these first uh, two months of the season. And unfortunately, we're waiting on a potential injury to Juan Estrada, which could be an opening for Sincere Shazir to potentially come back. Um, Sabatka 5-0 and with a 2.48 ERA, um, definitely done very well. Number five pitcher Hayden Yinger also has five wins in a 342 ERA. Estrada, Susana, and Painter are two, three, and four starters. All have 500 or better records about ERAs in the low to mid fours. Uh, definitely could do better than that. Uh, Bryce Miller up to 15 saves. Jorge Carrillo is our stopper, 377 ERA, which isn't fantastic. Has given us 45 and a third innings pitched out of the bullpen, though. Uh, Franklin Heal um, pitching pretty well after signing that extension. Sean Sullivan, uh, longtime starter and the only original Buffalo wing left, um, having a bit of a tough year so far. Uh, 28 hits, including five home runs in 25 and two-thirds innings, but his Sierra is a run and a half better than his actual ERA. Hopefully he will uh, get things straightened out. Is one of only two left-handed arms we've got in the pen. It's important for him to do well. Uh, Bacchus is back. Aranya has been fine as a middle reliever. And uh, the Rule 5 acquisition, Jaden Hilaire and the rookie Johanne Varejo um, have both done pretty solid jobs for us as long relievers this year. And when you put all of those pitching performances together, uh, end up third in the National League and runs allowed, fourth in starter ERA, fourth in bullpen ERA. Uh, you can see we're generally in the top five of the league in every pitching category except for home runs allowed where we're tied for seventh and strikeouts where we're sixth. Uh, defensive efficiency third, zone rating first. And we're fourth in the National League in runs scored and uh, in the top half um, – of pretty much every offensive category except for strikeouts where we're ninth and home runs where we are 12th. Uh, 32 and 22 record is a game worse than we'd be expected at this point. Um, we have dipped a bit against left-handed pitching, uh, continued to do very well against right-handers in the month of uh, May, but not as good in our few games against lefties. Uh, but still have had a uh, winning record each of the first two months of the season. Uh, five games over 500 in each of the first two months of the season. So uh, things are going reasonably well for our Buffalo Wings thus far here in 2033. And turning now to our everyday players over the first couple months of the season, uh, Estrada, obviously an important pitcher for us, and he's hitting over 300 with an on-base percentage of 430, giving his proclivity towards drawing walks. Uh, so certainly going to leave a hole uh, both in our lineup and in our rotation if that injury ends up being something serious. Uh, Ivan Herrera hitting 214 as a backup catcher. Uh, Rutschman hitting 257, nine doubles, five homers, and 152 at bats, 115 OPS plus. Um, not incredible, but actually it's still a better start than he's gotten off to in recent seasons, so we'll take some comfort in that. Uh, backup infielder Henry Allen hitting 240 with a couple of dingers, uh, sorry, one dinger, two ribbies. Uh, Bobby Bolig, after that monster uh, opening day with a double and two home runs, has not been as impressive. Of course, he would not be. Uh, the batting average, 273, 10 doubles and six homers in 161 at-bats uh, for Bolig, 117 OPS plus so far. Uh, Willie Adamas hitting 200, very limited action. Uh, Deshaun Seifu hitting 271. Uh, pretty much a league average type of offensive player. Uh, only two triples, 15 doubles, no homers yet for him. Uh, he has been able to score 29 runs, and he does have 15 stolen bases, but uh, the guy who has never not led the league in steals is uh, not actually even leading our team in steals this year since Honeycutt's been successful on the base paths. 
Uh, free agent acquisition, Jordan Westberg having a rough start in just a buck 88. Does have six doubles and four homers and 96 at bats, uh, but certainly um, hasn't produced as we would have hoped. Cam Collier has slowed down, still hitting over 300 with a 309 batting average, um, 131 OPS plus on the year. Shortstop Tim Hull, 273 average, 10 doubles, 5 homers, 110 OPS plus, 1.6 war on the season, uh, which is one of the better uh, figures on the team, uh, tied with Rutschman, and it's uh, behind only Vance Honeycutt, who's hitting 278, um, 9 homers, 32 ribbies, and the team best 16 steals. Uh, John Featherston, the center fielder, having a bit of a rough year offensively, hitting just 229 with two homers. Uh, he's been with us more for his defense than anything else, but you can see with the poor offense this year, he's been a below-replacement level type player for us, and uh, Featherston definitely has pressure in terms of young center fielders coming up through our organization, so it's conceivable that uh, he could be in his final months as a member of the Buffalo Wings. Uh, Gavin Grayevac playing pretty well um, as a platoon guy for us, uh, traded for him this offseason, hitting 298, uh, three doubles, three homers, and 94 at-bats, 113 OPS+. Plus. And Mike Heiner, the rookie who we signed uh, to that long extension, um, 260 average, 15 doubles, 5 home runs, uh, 108 OPS+. plus. So he's been an above-average offensive player. Um, hasn't been great, but uh, he's still only 23 years old, uh, still learning the ropes at the major league level. Um, certainly would hope that he can get that batting average with his profile of uh, – above average contact, um, excellent gap power and plus home run power combined with some speed and he's not going to strike out all that much. Would hope that he can get that batting average uh, closer to 300 most seasons in the majors, but we'll see how, uh, how that goes in the coming days, weeks, months, and years. And in the case of uh, the contract we've signed Heiner to, if he stays with us the whole time, uh, a full decade. And unfortunately, the news for Estrada is very bad. Torn PCL going to be out for eight months. Um, so that's going to leave a big hole in our rotation and also in our lineup. Um, had not been pitching as well this year. 3-3 three and three record, 464 ERA. But you can see his Sierra was basically right where it's been. Um, he's been very consistent over the course of his brief major league career. Turning to his batting stats, as we mentioned, he's uh, probably been our best overall offensive player thus far this year. Hitting 307 with that 430 on base percentage, 137 WRC plus. So the loss of Estrada for a team that is uh, still in win now mode is definitely a huge blow. Um, season is over. Um, We'll see what he looks like on the other side, but uh, clearly at this point he is going on to the 60-day IL where he's going to uh, join Shohei Otani, um, who uh, I don't think is going to be a pitcher anymore when he comes back from that torn labrum. We had signed him more as a insurance policy and a potential um, bat who could potentially replace next season uh, Vance Honeycutt if we move on from him but uh who knows with the injury to Estrada if Otani comes back and uh his pitching profile is a little better than we think it's going to be maybe we can still get something out of him on the mound um in the late stages of the season but he's still three months away here on June 3rd so unlikely to uh see him in the majors until mid to late September in a best case scenario, given that he's going to certainly need some uh, time in the minors to either work on his pitching, his hitting, or both. But I will say uh, we will use the departure of Estrada as an opportunity to um, hopefully bring up uh, Sincere Shazir to our team for uh, the next decade 
plus. Um, as I mentioned, he had been pitching well in AAA. Um, looks like he started another couple, uh, actually four games there. Uh, sorry, actually a few games there since we sent him down. I can't remember whether he was three and two or five and two when we uh, last checked in on him. But he's seven and two now with a 3.18 ERA. Um, not a lot left to prove there. Still think his control, his fastball, and his sinker could get a little better. Uh, we've checked on his relationships with our coaches, and he's got a great relationship with our bench coach at the major league level and a good relationship with our pitching coach. So hopefully his development uh, will still continue in the majors. But uh, Sincere Shazir, the top prospect in our system, number 23 prospect in baseball, a uh, guy who we hope can be a front-end starter for us, um, in the not so distant future is likely going to be in our rotation the rest of this year unless uh, something goes disastrously wrong with that injury to Juan Estrada. And despite the disappointing injury to Juan Estrada, Wings have been playing pretty well here in the month of June. Uh, record stands at 43 and 27. Up two and a half on the Nationals, three and a half on the Braves and the Pirates. Uh, the Expos seem to be dropping a bit in the standings over the last several weeks. Uh, taking a look at the leaderboard, not a lot of uh, Buffalo Wings among the top three in the big categories. Actually, there are no Buffalo Wings among the top three in the big categories, but uh, We've got the best record in the National League. We're leading our division and uh, the second best record in baseball now behind only the Blue Jays. So things are still going well. It's about the team achievement rather than the individual. And right now our team is the best team in the National League, which, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the episode, was kind of our stretch goal for this season. So hopefully we can... Uh, continue to play as well over the last uh, 92 games of the season as we have over the first 70. And we'll check in on some of our top prospects here. Uh, we're viewed as only having the 18th best minor league system in baseball. We do have six top 100 prospects, um, obviously led by Shazir. Um, started a couple games for us now, one and one record in the majors with a 415 ERA, 22 strikeouts over 17 and a third innings. Uh, hope that he can continue to go out there every uh Every fifth day for us and um, hopefully perform well um, and also would certainly love to see his control, his fastball, and his sinker all get a bit better over the uh, course of the next few months. Jesus Rivera, a youngster who was in our international free agent signing earlier this year or our top international free agent signing earlier this year. Uh, looks like he could be a pretty versatile outfielder for us, um, viewed as the 69th best prospect in baseball. Arturo Flores off to a good start in rookie ball. He's almost 21 with him performing better uh, this year, hitting 312 with six extra base hits in his first 48 at-bats. Uh, maybe time to move him up to A ball and try to uh, accelerate his progression through our system. Dave Zapp in double-A, former number one, uh, first round pick, fifth overall in uh, 2028, number 78 prospect in baseball, has made it up to double-A this year, where he's hitting 283 with 19 doubles and 15 homers and 258 at-bats. Uh, so he could be pretty close to earning a promotion to triple-A, uh, which is where the last two of our top prospects are, Isidro Ochoa, uh, seven and six with a 519 ERA. Um, so he has not been great either of the last two years when we've had him in AAA. Uh, looks like he is most likely going to be a back end of the rotation type of guy for us. Uh, still see him room for improvement in his stuff and several of his pitches. Uh, hopefully he'll continue to develop over the course of this year. He was up. He made the start for us last year in game 162 when we wanted to uh, save our pitchers for the playoffs and did not do well in his major league debut, but would think that we can probably see him again this September. 
Uh, looks like they're abusing him pretty hard down in AAA, 146 pitches two days ago. Um, and we do have him on an aggressive tiredness hook, but I think um, we'll put him on a 120 pitch count. Uh, I don't want to be wasting too much of this guy's potential future down in AAA. And last but not least, Joe Edwards. Um, he's had a somewhat similar year uh, to last season in AAA this year and a somewhat different year. Um, the similarities are he's still hitting an insane amount of home runs, 23 and 237 at-bats, walking in a great amount 57 times in 68 games started. Uh, but his batting average has dropped 60 points to just 215, and his WRC plus has dipped to 132 from 159. Um, still overall a productive player he's unhappy that he's not in the majors um, we've been playing him at third there over the first uh, couple months of the season in albany and you can see he's now fully trained up everywhere in the infield um, is proficient in playing those positions as he's going to be still has some work to do in terms of improving his contact and his avoid strikeouts and it doesn't look like he's made any progress this year although we haven't scouted him in a bit we're only high scouting accuracy but um if we see a little bit of progress on those fronts and also in terms of his offensive performance, uh, hopefully he will be up in the majors relatively soon. Uh, worst case scenario would be that we see him in September, but uh, it's certainly possible that uh, we will see Edwards in the major leagues earlier than that, depending on uh, our injury situation, what we do in the trade market, our needs, and uh, most importantly, his performance on the field. And while we're talking about prospects, uh, part of the reason we are is that it is draft day today. Uh, we'll take a look at a few of the top prospects uh, before finishing up the episode. Uh, top end pitchers, our scout doesn't think there's a ton this year. Andres Partida, um, like that he's durable left-hander whose stuff and movement uh, both could be excellent question his control uh, but certainly looks like uh, he's going to have three solid major league pitches good stamina good ability to hold runners uh, hard to imagine he'll be around when we're picking 34th in the draft this year because uh, of some compensatory picks ahead of us it looks like uh, wilson castro uh, another starting pitcher like the high work ethic um Another guy whose stuff and movement could both be really good if he fully develops. Uh, not as good as the other pitcher, but much better control. His arsenal not quite as impressive, potentially. And then Juan Trujillo, uh, another guy who looks like he could have a three-pitch arsenal. Uh, stuff and movement, great. Potentially questionable control. Certainly enough stamina to start and pretty good at holding runners. Um, so three interesting prospects there. A uh, couple who are more further along. Joe Axel coming out of Lovell. Uh, like the high work ethic. And uh, potentially has a six-pitch arsenal if everything develops. Um, looks more like a back end of the rotation type of guy, but could end up being a useful major league pitcher. And another guy who's further along is Abel Schmidt out of MSU. Uh, like the high work ethic and intelligence, 21-year-old throws in the mid to high 90s. Uh, looks like he's already got four major league quality pitches. His stuff is... Uh, at best viewed as being average for a major leaguer, but um, pretty good movement on his pitches and potentially above average control. Uh, certainly conceivable that um, one of those college guys could be around towards the end of the first round. Uh, I guess Ethan Thompson is another guy who looks a little further developed coming out of Fresno State. Um, Three pitches, including a changeup, but it looks like his changeup is pretty well developed at this point, has good work ethic. Uh, another guy whose stuff is the question, but um, looks like he'll have good movement, or excellent movement potentially, and enough control. So a few interesting pitchers available this year. The batters are where there are, as we often see, a um, lot of five-star prospects, clearly highlighted by the college player Jake Dickens, who... Uh, is not looking for a ton of money 
and basically looks ready to rake in the major leagues already at this point. Uh, coming out of Nebraska and uh, hitting just uh, Nebraska Omaha. I don't want to uh, be not uh, accurate enough for any Cornhuskers fans who happen to be around. Uh, good personality, although not, you know, high work ethic or leadership. Um, pretty good on the base paths. Um, enough range to kind of play left or right pretty effectively. Uh, could play center if you need him to. With those error and arm ratings, I'd view him as a left fielder. But uh, contact and gap power, both potentially excellent above average home run power, above average avoiding strikeouts. Not going to draw a ton of walks, uh, but still looks like he uh, could be a major league contributor for just about any team immediately. Uh, we'll take a look at a couple of other more developed players um, who aren't as highly regarded. Um, Josh Para, center fielder. Um, not much home run power, but looks like he could be a potentially pretty useful player um, if you don't want him to hit home runs. Damian Etherly uh, out of Miami. A little less interesting profile for him. Um, best case scenario is he's kind of a average-ish major league bat, and with that profile at almost 22 years old, don't think there's any guarantees that he hits his full potential. A couple of other college players... Doug Nugent, second baseman out of Carolina. Uh, looks like he could be really good contact, really good gap power, durable. Um, not great defensively, but at least he is versatile. Great King, interesting nickname. And Mike Contardo. Uh, love the speed. He's got a gun in right field. Uh, potentially a very interesting contact hitter out of Point Loma Nazarene University. So those are some of the more developed college guys. And now we'll take a look at all of the five-star prospects quickly um, before I finish up the episode. If you've got thoughts on which direction we should go, um, would love to hear them. As I mentioned, though, uh, we're not going to be picking till 34th this year, so... Uh, a good number of the players that we have highlighted are likely to be off the market before we are picking. Uh, Jared Barr is a third baseman. Not all that impressive defensively. Could have an interesting bat if he completely develops. Um, committed to Bryant. Looking for pretty big money. Amari Brownsmith is a catcher. Uh, Average-ish defensively. But if he fully develops with that home run power, could certainly be an interesting bat behind the plate. We've already talked about Jake Dickens. Uh, I'm not uh, holding out any hope that he will be around at number 34. Jonathan Dockery, uh, another center fielder. High work ethic. Um, not looking for a ton of money, even though that's not really a big concern of ours this year. Looks like he could have an interesting-ish bat, more of a corner outfielder type, even though he's listed as a center fielder. A.J. Fleeman, left fielder, um, not great defensively, don't love some of the personality traits, not a ton of speed, um, potentially has a really good eye, hard to imagine, uh, looking for $7 million, that even if he's on the board, this is a direction that we'd go. Third baseman, Mike Graves. Uh, coming out of Stony Brook, uh, like the durability, like the high work ethic, another third baseman who uh, is not great defensively, certainly could become a first baseman, um, probably not an outfielder with that horrible range, but uh, pretty far along compared to some of the other prospects. If he fully develops, his bat is potentially um, excellent, um, and you love the durability, Um Question is, he's almost 22 years old, and uh, we think he's got 65 potential home run power, but he's only shown 25 in terms of his ability so far. So um, he's got a lot of work to do to reach his alleged potential. Sean Mohan, shortstop, um, not great defensively, a pretty uh, one-dimensional slugger, but if a uh, player with 60 contact and 80 home run power... Uh, even if he is pretty one-dimensional, uh, could still be a very interesting bat. 
Luis Montalvo, uh, another shortstop, uh, another guy who looks like he's going to be a very versatile defensive player, kind of out of the Joe Edwards mold. Um, don't know how great he is defensively at any position except for uh, first base, and it looks like he's probably a decent uh, left fielder as well. Interesting potential bat if he fully develops. He's a guy who, uh, if he's around at 34, probably would be in the mix of us to consider. Uh, Dan Norton, right fielder out of Cal State Fullerton, uh, corner outfielder, low leadership. Um, potentially interesting bat if he fully developed. Bert Ronaldo, uh, another right fielder, has some speed. Interesting-ish bat if he fully develops, uh, but he's almost 19 years old. Nelson Rojas, a center fielder, has more traditional center field traits. I think he's a very good, excellent, and very good defensive left fielder. Um, could also play center or right. Um, if he fully develops, it's a potentially interesting bat, but that's the question with most of these guys. If they've got five-star potential, they're certainly going to be interesting. If they fully develop, the question is whether they'll get there. Ed Rudiger, uh, another center fielder, already fragile coming out of high school. Do like the speed, do like the defensive profile, and certainly uh, like well above average home run power and a borderline excellent uh I slash plate discipline. Devin Sarabia, another center fielder out of uh, committed to Hofstra High Schooler out of uh, Deposit High School in Rome, New York. Um, pretty interesting on the base paths. Really, really good bunter. Another guy who uh, his home run power and his eye are certainly interesting. Zaire Sweeper, yet another center fielder, looking for a ton of money, $13 million. Uh, potentially interesting bat, potentially interesting glove, a little bit of speed on the base paths. Um, happy birthday, Zaire, turning 19 today, and you're going to be likely drafted in the first or second round by somebody. A uh, couple of catchers here who are also five-star prospects, Jake Taylor, Pretty average-ish defensively, but a very interesting bat for a catcher if he fully develops. Um, it's 6-4, could play him at first base maybe also. Um, the bat definitely looks interesting. Dan Thigpen, another catcher, uh, looks a little bit above average defensively. A potential interesting bat, durable committed to become a South Carolina Gamecock. Uh, not a ton of speed, but um, not an uninteresting profile. If he fully develops and he does have high work ethic and above average catcher who is um, going to draw a lot of walks, make pretty good contact, and potentially still have a decent amount of power, um, the only knock on him is how often he's going to strike out. But uh, with a fully developed profile, which again um, is no guarantees, Dan Thigpen to me is a pretty interesting player. And last but not least, among the five-star prospects, 18-year-old center fielder Chris Wilkins. Uh, like the high work ethic, um, batting profile, very interesting if he fully develops. Not looking for a ton of money. More of a corner outfielder than a center fielder. Um, could also definitely play first base at 6'4". Um, so there are some interesting prospects out there for us to consider. If you've got any strong opinions on which directions we should go or not go, we'd love to hear them. But like I said, we're not picking till 34th. So odds are uh, the most attractive potential players that uh, we've talked about are very unlikely to be available to us when we are finally making our first round pick. But here on June 21st, it's the first day of summer 2033. It's the first year player draft for 2033. And our Buffalo Wings are in first place here. So uh, the season is going pretty well thus far. And we'll find out what we do in the draft and uh, how the season goes in June and into July 
in our next episode. Until then, thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.